It was during the Victorian years. In England, it was the custom, and it was on Christmas Eve night when the father of the home would gather everybody around the fireside. And for many a home, it was the custom where the father would read to them that make-believe story or poem that was entitled, "'Twas the Night Before Christmas." And it goes something like this, boys and girls. "'Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung on the chimney with care, all waiting for St. Nicholas soon to be there. And that was all what it used to be years ago in the, in the old Victorian days. Many families used to gather their children and their family around the fireside to read this make-believe story called Twas on the Night Before Christmas. But one of the main family traditions during the Victorian years in England, the father of the home would gather the family around them and get the family Bible and bring the family all around them and with the open Bible read to the children and to the family the true story of Christmas. And as I thought about those two traditions of a bygone day, it raised a question within my own heart. What was happening in heaven on the night before Christ was born? What was in the heart and in the mind of God on the night before Christ was born? What was even in the mind and in the heart of the Lord Jesus on the night before he was born. And I want to call tonight's message, Twas the night before, before Christmas. You see, what was happening in heaven on the night before Christmas? The angels were getting prepared, waiting with great anticipation to announce to the world that a Savior would be born. What was happening in the heart and in the mind of God on that night, the first night before Christmas was? God's heart and God's mind was overflowing with love for you and me. On that night before Christmas, the Holy Scriptures teaches us what was in the mind and in the heart of Christ before He was born. Hebrews 10 Verse 5, seven, 5 to 7 says, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared for me, and burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast it no pleasure. And then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it written of me to do thy will, O God, above. And you know, that's the whole thing that was in the mind and in the heart of the Lord Jesus before he came into the world. I want you to know on the night before Christmas, God was in control. On the night before Christmas, God's plan was being put in place. In the night before Christmas, God was at work. And to us on the night before Christmas, you and I, dear friends, were in God's mind. And I want to bring this carol service to a close by saying this tonight, God has laid it on my heart. Twas the night before Christmas, Christ was coming. Twas the night before Christmas, Christ was coming into this world, not to start a religion. Christ was coming into this world to seek sinners. We read in Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, verse 10, the Son of God has come to seek that which was lost. And tonight, if you're not saved in this meeting, this is what Christ came to do. He came to seek you because you are lost. On the night before Christmas, Christ came into this world, was coming into this world, not only to seek, He was coming in to save. Coming in to save sinners. Twas the night before Christmas, 
Christ was coming into this world to save sinners from their sin. You know, dear unsaved friend tonight in this carol service, this is what Christ was coming to do. He was coming to save you from your sin. He didn't only come to seek. He didn't only come to save. He come to satisfy. The Lord Jesus says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. My dear unsaved friend this evening, twas the night before Christmas and Christ was coming into this world because you and I were on his mind. Heaven's concern was the heart of man. And twas the night before Christmas. God's plan was being put in place. In a little isolated cottage in Devon, Christmas Eve night, 1940, when the, world, when the world war was seen to be going the wrong way, a little girl was staying with her granny. She jumped up onto her granny's knee and said to her granny, Granny, what does Christmas really mean? Can you tell me the true Christmas story? And granny, with nothing, only a wee flicker of an oil lamp, went over to an old sideboard, took out the Bible and brought the Bible to her and set her wee granddaughter up on her knee and said, Here's the gospel story, the Christmas story. And turn to Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4. This is what she read. She read it when the fullness of the time had come. God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law to redeem them that were under the law. And that grandmother told that little granddaughter the true meaning of Christmas, why the Lord Jesus came. He came to die on an old rugged cross to save us from our sins. And that wee granny, or that wee granddaughter looked up into her granny's face and said, Granny, wasn't God so loving? Wasn't God so kind? Dear unsaved friend in this meeting tonight, wasn't God so loving? Wasn't God so kind that he would send his only begotten son into this world to go all the way to Calvary and there to be crucified to an old rugged cross? Yes, this Christmas season, we get taken up with the manger. We get taken up with the babe. Ah, but we must never forget the cross because the cross tonight was part and parcel of God's plan to save you from your sins. Bethlehem was only the outset of it all, but Calvary was the outcome of it all. Ah, friend, twas the night before Christmas, and Christ was coming into this world for the sole purpose to go all the way to Calvary's cross and to give his life for you. Secondly, twas on the night before Christmas, not only was Christ coming, but God was gracious. You know, dear unsaved friend tonight, that first Christmas proves to us how gracious God really is. Even though today our hearts may be hardened, imagine tonight if God had halted the proceedings and stopped Christ from coming into this world. But here's something I want to finish with tonight. I want to finish with this this evening. You will stand and face God someday. Doesn't matter who you are. You will stand and face God someday. But how will you stand before God? And how will you face God? Will you face God as a lost sinner who had no time for His love, who had no time for His grace, who had no time for His Son? Is that how you'll stand before God? Or will you stand before God as a saved sinner? Because you will stand and you will face God someday. And you'll give an account. Not anything to do with what church you go to, for that's not important at all. That doesn't count with God about what church or denomination what you belong to. That doesn't count with God doesn't count with eternity either. The only thing that counts with God in the final day is what you do with His Son, the Lord Jesus. And I wonder tonight, if you were to stand before God before this night, sir, 
How would you answer that question? How would you answer that question tonight? Can you honestly say, yes, I am trusting in the Lord Jesus? I'm trusting in His blood. I'm trusting in His grace. I'm trusting in His salvation. Friend, if you are tonight, thank God all is well with your soul. But if you can't say that tonight, to stand before God lost in your sin and to face God lost in your sin, how terrible will the moment be if that's the way you would face God and stand before Him. This is what God wants you to know tonight. The wonderful words of John 3, 17. God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Twas the night before Christmas. Christ was coming, coming to be born and to die. And twas the night before Christmas. And God was gracious in sending His Son into this world to suffer, to bleed, and to die on an old rugged cross to save you from the horrors of of a Christless hell. That's what God sent His Son into the world to do, to save you from going to a horrible, lost sinner's hell. And tonight, can I invite you to open up your heart's door. Be not like the innkeeper tonight. Be not like him and say, sorry, no room. Don't be like him tonight. You open up your heart's door. And tonight the Lord Jesus may be saying to some heart in this meeting right now, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man or woman heareth my voice and openeth the door, I will come in. Do you see? It was the night before Christmas. Christ was coming. God was gracious. And it was all for you. And it was all for me. What will you do tonight with God's Son, whom He sent into this world to die? Let us bow in a wee word of prayer. Lord, tonight we thank you for your love. We thank thee, Lord, for thy mercy. We thank thee, Lord, for thy grace. We thank Thee, Lord, on that night before Christmas. Lord, You fulfill Your plan to send this, Your lovely Son into this world to be our Savior. And Lord, if there's any in our meeting this evening still unsaved, may they see, Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, enlighten this great truth into their heart that they could see and will see this evening that the one who came so long ago came to seek and to save and to satisfy them. Oh God, I pray, give deciding grace. Even on this carol service evening, may this be the night for some soul to trust the Savior. For it's in our Savior's name we pray. Amen.